Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to replace the impeller on an older Mercury 9.8 horsepower outboard motor. So here's a closer look at it. This is my personal engine that I got from a guy. I tried it in my test drum yesterday and I noticed that there was no water coming out of the tube over here. That's the tube that discharges the cooling water. So if the impeller down here isn't working properly, it's not going to send up water to the motor to cool it down. So if you don't see any water coming out of that tube, do not run your engine. Stop it immediately and check it out. Sometimes too the little tube can be clogged so if you run a piece of wire inside back and forth you can unclog it but if that doesn't do the trick you may want to take the cover off and I'll show you what to check before you replace the impeller. This motor here by the way does have a thermostat so it does have to warm up before the water exits the tube but I did pop the thermostat cover off while it was running and there was no water even coming up to it. So definitely the impeller needs to be looked at. So I'm going to get started on that right now. All you're going to need to get started is a 9 16 wrench and a ratchet and a half inch socket. So what you need to do is remove the whole bottom end here. And this nut over here is going to have to come off. It's a 9 16. So after you remove this nut and the other one, the whole lower unit is going to come off. So I'm just going to start by loosening the 9 16 nut over here. You're not going to be able to take the nut off until you've loosened the bottom nut and that the lower unit starts to come down. As you can see the stud is protruding and there's not enough space for that nut to come off right away. I'll just leave it there. I've also adjusted the tilt of the motor so I can give you a better camera angle for taking the bottom nut off. So now just hold this and take the nut off. Now I'm just going to gently tap with a rubber mallet, I mean very gently. Don't tap on this part because you could break the fin off, so I'm just going to tap over here. And you're going to see the stud come down and then I'll be able to remove that nut completely. And keep your hands on the bottom of the lower unit, just like this while you undo the nut, just in case it ever fell. And now the whole bottom end should come off. Now they don't always come off this easy, I'm just surprised at how easily this one's coming off today though. So what I've done now is I've put the bottom fin in the vise. There's cardboard on each side as you can see here to protect it. And having it up in a vise like this makes it a lot easier to work on. And by the way, the impeller is right under here. So what I need to do now is remove the 2 7 nut on this top plastic cover. And by the way, these are lock nuts. So they might be a bit stiff when you take them off. And there's two washers, one on each stud. Now you're ready to take the cover off, but first there's a rubber ring here that needs to come off. Now this metal plate here needs to come off. There's the impeller. To some people the impeller may still look good, but when you look close you can see that some parts of it are not touching the outer casing that it's in, like right here. So it's not going to pump water when it's all shriveled up like this and curled and it doesn't come back. It needs to be nice and springy and hugging the tunnel or the cylinder that it's in. Anyways, the impeller's shot. I'm just going to pull it out now. To pull the impeller, I'm just going to grab my little pick and push it up. Now there's a little key in there inside of a keyway, so make sure you do not lose that. I'm just going to turn the shaft to locate it. And there it is. This key does come off as you can see. So be very careful with it. Put it in a very safe place. I'm just going to grab it out of here with some pliers and put it in a bucket. Right here with my other parts. And here's a close up view of that impeller. The little paddles, whatever they're called, should be up like this. As you can see they're cracking and all that. So it's about time it gets replaced. Now before you go and order the impeller for your Mercury outboard motor, I'm going to show you how to measure the inside diameter with a caliper because there are two different impellers for these motors. Now if you look at a parts list over here, you can see that there's two impellers. Now one of them is 0.456 inside diameter and the other impeller is 0.438. So you want to make sure that you measure to see which of these numbers your impeller measures up to. Here's my caliper, it's digital, it's much easier when it is digital, and I'm going to set it in inches. So 
So I'm getting about 455, 456, 457. Now I'm going to go look at the part numbers and see which one I need. So since mine is a point four five six, this is the part number that I need, 47-89981. Now before you put the impeller back in, you can take off this screw here. Now this is a screw you take off when you want to put your engine away and you want to flush the engine. The reason why I'm taking the screw off is to blow air through some other tubes and to make sure that the system isn't clogged where the water should be running through. What I'm going to do now is put my blow gun right in the pipe over here. Wear safety glasses when you do this in case air ever blew some dirt back in your eyes. Now I'm going to spray some air. And you should feel some air coming out of here. So at least this tells me the pipe isn't clogged from here to the bottom. Now I'm just going to put the screw back in. Make sure it's back on tight. Now I've disconnected the hose that connects to the connector here where the water should spray out when everything's working good. And I'm going to blow air through the bottom tube again and the air should be coming out of this tube here. And I can feel the air coming out of the tube here which is good. So that tells me there's no blockage in the motor or the thermostat. And by the way this is the hose that connects to where the thermostat is. There's a small connector over here and the thermostat's in here. So all looks good. Now I'm going to get started on reinstalling the impeller. Now before I put the impeller back, I'm going to make sure that the shaft here is clean. As you can see, there's a bit of carbon from the exhaust on there. And this is what I'll be using on my die grinder. It's a special tool. It's made by 3M. It's good for removing gaskets and different things like that. And it does not damage your parts. Make sure to wear safety glasses when you use this tool. Now you can use a quick 400 or 600 grit just to make it smoother. You can also use some scotch bright pads for your die grinder instead of what I use. You do have to be careful though even with the tool I use because it can be a bit abrasive even though it's made of rubber it appears. Now another thing before you put the impeller back in is you want to make sure that the tube here isn't plugged. This tube here comes out just by pulling on it and you can blow in it or use compressed air to make sure it's not plugged. This one is actually not plugged so I know it's good to put it back in. You also want to check where the tube goes in that you can see through like this and also where the tube hooks in the other side where the impeller is stationed. You want to make sure that this is clear through here and right up to here, right down here. So it's nice and clear so I'm good to go. Now to put the copper tube back in just push it in like this and then just push it down in here. So it's not in there tight, it's just there loose, but it's snug, it's not gonna go anywhere. And here's the kit I got, it's part number 47-89981Q1, and it also came with this metal plate. I got this kit because I realized that the tube here was pretty damaged on my motor, so I figured I might as well replace it. The first thing I'm gonna do is install the little key here. So what I do is grab a bit of grease like this, some thick grease, like wheel bearing grease. And I put some on where the key is going to go. Right down here where it's flat at the bottom of the shaft. The reason why I'm doing that is so that the key stays stuck on when I put down the impeller. So I'm just going to put it on the grease, bring it back where it should here. And I'll just line it up on the shaft. And just make sure it's as straight as possible so the impeller goes in nice and easy. Now when I put the impeller on, I want to line up the groove here inside of it to the key on the shaft that I just installed. But first I'm going to grab the zip tie, wrap it around the impeller. I'm going to shift the little blades here so they're clockwise. So I'll just squeeze the zip tie and point all the blades here to point clockwise like I mentioned. So here it is, and I'm going to insert it on the shaft and make sure the keyway here is aligned with the key at the bottom of the shaft. So when you do this procedure here, just take your time. It might be a bit frustrating if you don't do it often. Even if you do, it might still be frustrating. So now I'm just going to push down. Now that all the bottom parts of the impeller are in the casing, 
I'm going to cut the zip tie. Now this part here is really crucial because you don't want the little key to fall down at the bottom and not be in between the impeller and the shaft because what's going to happen is the shaft's going to turn and not the impeller and your engine's not going to be cooling itself so I'm holding it on really good. It's probably the most frustrating part of the whole operation here but if you see that the key has fallen just start over. Sometimes I don't even bother with the zip tie I just do it by hand like this. And you'll know that the key is in the impeller because when you turn the shaft it's going to turn and now what I'm going to do is just push the impeller down further and this is how you want it and everything should turn freely just like this. Now I'm going to reinstall the metal plate and this side here is going to go flat like this and this here is going to go into a groove right here. And now this is going to go in the groove over here on the plastic part, so just slide this over the shaft. And it's going to go nice and flush like this. If it's not flush here, you may have put this on the wrong side, so just do a 180. Now there's a washer and a nut that goes on each stud. And I'll be using a 7 16 socket to do this. And make sure you tighten it up evenly. So I just snug this one. Now I'm going to snug the other one. And I'll go back and tighten them up evenly again. Now I'm going to install the new seal here from the kit. I'm just going to slide it on the shaft all the way down. And now the other o-ring is going to go at the top of the shaft. It's going to go on a bit tight but just get her down there. And then leave it in the notch over here. And I'll just put the plastic tube over here. So that's it for installing the impeller on the lower unit. Now the lower unit is ready to be installed on the motor. Now another tip is make sure you haven't moved the gear shifter here from the time you removed the lower unit to now. It's going to go in much easier if this hasn't been moved because that means the little shaft here for the gears is going to be in the same position. As you can see the gear shifting shaft only goes on in one position so it's very important that these parts here haven't been moved. What I do to make it easier is I just lift the engine up like this on my stand then you know what's going on. When I put the lower unit back on the engine I want to make sure that the plastic tube goes into the copper pipe here. This is the pipe that feeds water to the engine to cool it and then you're going to see that I'm going to put the other parts through here and the drive shaft is going to go right in here. So now I'm just going to insert this in there like this. And again make sure you get the plastic tube in the copper tube in there as you push the whole unit up. And now you can see that the bolt here goes through here and the gear shifting shaft is right in here. And now just push up. You may have to wiggle it a bit to get everything in. This is the other part here that I like the least as well because sometimes things just don't want to line up properly. Sometimes when I have it this close and it doesn't want to go I just tap it with a rubber mallet. Not hard. Go really light if you do this. And that may just help you to finish it off here. Sometimes it's hard just to get the last quarter inch in, but you don't want to put it in all the way because what happens is you can't put the nut in just like I did here. So I'm just going to have to back it off a bit. I'm just going to pull slightly back. And now you want to install the thicker nut right above the propeller here. Now I'm going to tighten up this nut a bit, but not fully. You want to make sure to tighten up the nut over here and the other one I was just working on evenly so that the lower unit comes on the motor evenly. You want the gap to be the same all the time when you tighten up both nuts. So now with the 916 wrench I'm going to tighten up this nut a bit. And you're going to see the gap starting to close. And I'll tighten up this one and go back and forth until the whole lower unit is installed properly and evenly. 
Now it's all tightened up and you can see the gap is even here. And if I turn my propeller, I can see that it's still in neutral. So I'm glad that nothing is messed up in the shift linkage. So now that it's all installed, all I have to do is try it out in a test tank to make sure that the impeller is working properly. Anyways, you can see a good stream coming out of the hole over here. That's what you want. Took a little while for the stream to come out because this engine here has a thermostat right over here. So the engine has to warm up before the thermostat opens up to let the water through. So as you can see, it's not that hard to do. Just be very careful when you reinsert the new impeller into the lower unit. If you followed the instructions in this video, you should be able to do it yourself. Thanks again for watching and you can see me in my next video.